Hey folks, it's E Chip out at location two, or country location, or whatever we're called. Uh, out here to take a second look at this backhoe and uh, see what else we can learn about it. Um, today we're going to try to clean up the ignition a little bit, see if we can get that misfiring problem to stop, and then also we're going to try to pull uh, this top shifter assembly off and uh, see why it's hanging up. So. Uh, another thing we've got to do is we've got to jump into this uh, backhoe controller box and access uh, the the uh, control rods there that operate these handles because some of them are stuck. And before I want before I go trying to you know see if I can get the backhoe to work, I want to uh, make sure that these levers are working properly. So, got to pull that enclosure off and uh, jump in there and I don't know get some penetrating oil on some things. So really, this is just another day of seeing if we can, uh, do, or doing an assessment on this thing to see uh, if it's going to be worth it to keep. So appreciate your sticking with us. Thanks. Okay, uh, six bolts removed and a couple of wraps of the hammer. And this thing seems loose enough. Um, let's see if we can get it off of here and see what's going on. Ah, now we're going to play havoc, I guess, getting this uh, shifter assembly out of here. So I'm going to turn the camera off to save some battery. I'll come back when I'm able to wiggle it off. Well, folks, you are seeing what I am seeing for the first time. Uh, I suspected it. I suspected I'd see some rust in here. It has really built up on these gears, and I I don't know what else this is here. I'm, it's really hard for me to tell, you know, what's going on here, but clearly we got a lot of rust. It's just ugly. It is ugly. Uh, the nice thing about this little gearbox is that they are super simple and easy to rebuild. And, um, heck, you can get a rebuild kit for them for about... Oh, I don't know, 150, 180 dollars, something like that. Maybe there's something more here that I just don't see. My suspicion is that it's just rust from sitting for so long, and that hopefully it could be cleaned up. But I just don't know until I get torn into. Here is the gearbox. I mean, the top of the gear assembly, the gear shift assembly. You can see there are the forks that move that move the uh, gears back and forth, and I was looking on here for some wear the excessive wear i don't i don't see a lot let me get this arranged i don't see a lot of excessive wear at least right now to the forks they're covered in gunk so it's well i take that back this one's got a nice little ridge on it here which means this is worn down let's see if we have the same we have something similar over here but not as bad um how about this one? Yeah. There's a little bit of wear on it. It's wearing down. Yeah, yeah we've got some wear. Um, and then obviously these bars here are supposed to move uh, to shift to move the gears back and forth and shift this thing. But uh, obviously it's so rusted out, I can't get it to move at all. Um, so there we have it uh we'll see what else there is to see well, before i stand up there i suppose i should put the floorboard back in temporarily Now, remember that uh, we ran the engine last time, and in so doing, we have doubtless increased the hydraulic pressure in the system. So I'm pretty sure that if I move any of these levers, particularly to relieve uh, pressure, that things are going to want to move. 
Okay, so these are moving now, but the hose not moving, and, and that's okay with me. I don't want anything, you know, sudden to happen. But uh, I really just want to get this loosened up and get these moving independently. There's a bar right here that all of these rest on, and I've got to get some penetrating oil down inside that, uh, in that bar too to loosen up because they appear to be all rusted to the bar. So I will do that next. So cleaning up these uh, spark plug wires, uh, at least the terminals on the connectors as best I can. As you can see, that one's really rusted. But uh, what I've been doing is taking a little wire brush I have on the end of the drill here, getting inside that connector as best I can, clean it up. Same thing with the other end. And what you're looking for is to make sure you've got good conductivity uh, in these wires uh, because they can contribute, uh, they, they can cause the, uh, the, the engine to misfire. Gee, do you think that might be a reason, one reason why this is missing, why the engine's missing? Look at that connector. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how long it's been like that, but we'll get this prettied up. And that's a sort of a fix. My crimper wasn't big enough to get around that properly, but uh, seems to be a good connection. It'll work. And uh, I'm also switching out the spark plugs as I go. Um, spark plugs are two bucks each, so it's not a great investment in case we're not going to keep this thing. Okay, turning our attention to the distributor and points and condenser and rotor and all that good stuff. This is the distributor cap. All the plug wires come into it, of course. And you can see that corrosion. I don't know if you can see that white chalky looking stuff on these contacts. That can definitely have an effect upon uh, uh, reliability and missing and stuff like that. So I'm going to get a, a wire brush and clean all those up going to clean the tip of this rotor also that touches them. I'll jump in there and file down the contacts on the points to make sure because they're probably corroded too and uh, start this thing up see what it does. I'll get some hydraulic oil in this. I can't hold that big bucket and the camera at the same time and I don't have a tripod handy, so you'll just have to trust me. Well folks, I'm running out of daylight and the GoPro ran out of battery, so I'm using my phone right now. I'm getting ready to start this up again and see how it runs and then see, since I got some more uh, hydraulic fluid in this, um, <laughs> so far we put 10 gallons in this and I think the uh, capacity is 17 gallons so uh, since we uh, did that and I know that you know a lot of this stuff uh, hydraulic oil uh, needed to circulate through the system and that's probably where the first five gallons went second five gallons I just put in the reservoir and uh, so anyway it's still not enough. We still haven't met the thing. And I don't see any major leaks. And there are no leaks on the ground. So um, I know that uh, the other day we got the, the loader to move just a little bit. And some oil came pouring out of this. But there's not a lot on the ground underneath. I mean, I, the oil's in the system there somewhere. Uh, it's going somewhere. But uh, looks like we need to get even more hydraulic oil. I got the backhoe levers uh, loosened a little bit. So we're going to try to start this again, see how it's running, and then uh, maybe uh, if it's running okay, I'll jump up there, uh, see if I can get the uh, R's up on the engine, see if I can get the speed up a little bit, and work some of these levers and see if we can get this backhoe to go. Um, oh, and look, Robert just arrived, so she can help hold the camera while I do this because uh, I don't have the tripod attachment for my phone. So anyway, glad she's here. Let's get this going. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I um, I picked up this little jumper um, button to help me assist because I thought I was going to be here working alone when I did this, and I just you know it pushed the button and helps turn the engine over. It's nice for working on this side. You don't need two people one on the other side to start it. One here. So anyway, now that Robert's here, hi Robert. Hello. 
<laughs> I'm getting ready to start this. You want to help? Sure. Okay, let's do it. We're trying this again after we fixed a cord. <laughs> and it's super cold here today, like 28. That's not super cold. It's super cold for where we live, kind of. Okay, folks, next morning, uh, we couldn't get the thing started and we discovered why. A little jumper wire that runs uh, between the coil and the body of the distributor uh, uh, was loose and <laughs> brittle and became detached. We couldn't get it started, it was getting dark anyway. So last night I made up a new wire. We've got it connected. Well, top of the coil, that new black wire right there. Uh, and blurry, so and it connects to the body of the distributor there, so. Anyway, let's get this puppy started and see how she does. Okay, Robber. Push this. Yep, your turn. Go for it. It's cold. Wiggle that thing back and forth a little bit. Okay. He chips big hands can't fit. Huh. Why is it going her? The starter. It's not engaging. So I'm, wait, I'm lowering. No, you're raising I'm, this time. Let's I'm, see if we can get them all the way up. Okay. Okay. All right. And this one came up. See? And then a whole bunch of gunk squirted out all over the place. See, it's all over the ground. This is a dud. So you gotta replace that hose. And we can get it up the rest of the way. What? That one. That one stopped. It didn't move Completely? any. Yeah. It went that far and it didn't do anything else. Interesting. Okay. I didn't even realize this one was working because I was looking at that one. I just assumed that one wasn't working either. Then I heard blowing oil all over the place. Yeah, I know. So and I, I fully expect it to be back on the ground in no time. Both I, of them. I felt it go a boom, and then I looked, and that one was up. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is try to swing the boom. Okay. Okay. This is so fun. Are you serious? I'm serious. Where is it going? Is it on the floor or on the ground? No. It's just filling this thing up. Well, I mean, how much does it hold? 24 gallons total. We put 15 in it. Well, but 24 gallons total to go to all of the unused the material? The entire system. It's 24 gallons. Just I think so, yeah. It's going to full height.
Nice and easy, easy. Easy. I'm barely doing it. Okay. And that's good. That'll keep it off the ground. Okay, uh, so <laughs> today it is so cold out here. It is like 28 degrees. I am freezing. Um, but today we got all of the hydraulics working and everything works on the hydraulics. There are not many leaks, really. The biggest leaks come from the little uh, supporter things, Stabilizer. stabilizers, but all the rest of them are in decent shape. So that's a good thing. We dumped a bunch of hydraulic fluid in this thing so far, 15 gallons. This thing is basically empty. But uh, we have some major leaks, and we may have a bent ram on one of the stabilizers. But, um, I mean, other than that, the hydraulics basically work. Um, at least some of the hydraulic cylinders are going to need rebuilding. I don't know if all of them will, but at least some of them will. The valve bodies, you know, the valve controllers for the hydraulics, and the uh, motor, hydraulic uh, motors and pumps, appear to be working okay without real leaks. I mean, other than the, the normal seepage you get from them. Um, the engine, you know, we did that tune up to it. It still runs pretty poorly. And, it, you know, you would expect it to with two dead cylinders uh, because of the uh, head gasket leak. Uh, because unlike an overhead uh, valve engine, the flathead engines, the way they leak is between cylinders. So when one cylinder is actually building pressure, the other one is relieving pressure, and all that pressure is just going into the other one. So you really don't get any efficiency out of the engine. Uh, at minimum, the end, top end of the engine is going to have to come off and some work done. Um, at worst, total rebuild, but mm, not sure it's going to need it. Um, what else? Lots of, lots and lots and lots of little things on this that need to be done. A whole lot. And those are the ones that add up, you know. <clears throat> so we are still trying to figure out whether or not this is worth it. It, looking at it and looking at our costs that we would have going into it. And, of course, the transmission also, which you saw, is filled with rust. Um, that, those typically can be rebuilt fairly cheaply. Um, rebuild kits for those are cheap and I can do it myself so that's good I can do the engine myself I can do these cylinders myself that's the good part about it, is we can do these Robert um, it just takes a lot of labor and time and well you know so I know and I get to be a grease monkey like I said <laughs> if you want to but uh, yeah I mean there's just a there's there's a lot of labor it's mostly labor involved in this to get it running again um, not a whole lot of parts. Uh, the parts seem to be pretty stout and in good shape. So, you know, it's just one of those things we just have to, we need to think about it some more. <laughs> so, we've got quite a bit to do, if we're going to keep it. But uh, the hydraulics work. I mean, the things raise and lower and swing and the stabilizers go down and the, the dipper dips and the bucket turns and, the, you know, uh, grabs and the, the boom sticks out and comes back and so, I mean, it, it all works. Um, it's just a matter of uh, getting it to work well. And then, of course, we'll have to consider, our, we already know about what our transport costs will be getting it out to contentment. But we would have that cost with just about anything we purchased here. And there's nothing out there for sale. I've been looking. So, um, it's, uh, or, or if there were, I mean, we would have the same transport cost within the state uh, because the nearest ones of any you know, real value, far away. And the advantage here, of course, is that we, we have the luxury and time uh, to work on it here all through the winter and spring, get it ready, but just don't know. You know, we've said from the beginning, we have a price break in mind and we're not gonna go over that. And the way it looks now, we're pretty much at that point, knowing all of the things that we know we're we close. have to do. We're close. Right now, if we scratch it, we're not really out any money, mm -hmm. so. This is the make or break time, really, on whether we decide to go forward or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll let you know. But right now, Robert's going to go out with her brother and bag us a deer. I'm going to bag something. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's a deer. I do, too. She went out and got herself a 270. 
and uh, she zeroed it in on the site last night and uh, so she's gonna go hunting and she's gonna get us a deer that so I want deer chili deer jerky <laughs> Uh, you know, ground deer patties, whatever. Okay. There. I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, uh -oh. oh, that's a good way to put yeah, it. Yeah, it is. Mm. That's, and people, that's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. That's why you have a scope. It helps. I know. <laughs> anyway, thanks, folks, for watching. We'll catch up with you next time. Bye. Bye.